So perhaps uh, we'll try to, it would, would it be more comfortable in the chair for you, Prabhu, or do you prefer to ask song? It's, it's okay, yeah. So Guru Prashad Prabhu is, uh, is, is, as far as I think the devotees in the temple here concerned and online, it's probably the longest member of Viscon Ottawa here. Uh, what year was it, Prabhu, when, when you first came to Viscon Ottawa? 1990. 1990. Give myself the family moved in 1990. Okay, so it was the same year that we came to to Scotland. Okay. So we moved here in 1990 as well. Okay, wonderful. So uh, Prashad Prabhu has been here for very very many years. He's uh, also a, a director at Scotland Ottawa as well, <clears throat> and uh, he goes back and forth from Ottawa to New York. He's got two homes right now where his his daughter and son-in-law uh, live and granddaughter as well. And, uh, and Prabhu, you know, has given many classes here before, and he's spoken in other places as well. And uh, today we have uh, the good fortune of hearing from him. And I can see he's got some, some books, some wonderful books, Bhagavad Gita, Dharma as well. So uh, we're looking to, to hear from that. Also, uh, while you're listening, uh, if, uh, Afterwards, I know Guru Prashad Prabhu always likes and, uh, and most of the speakers that always appreciate it, but having opportunity for reflections and questions and comments. So while you're listening, if there's anything that, that comes up that you can think of, please uh, please save it for afterwards because uh, we'll, we'll have a chance to, to share afterwards. So uh, let me just connect this. Let's get you set up, Guru. Krishna, dear devotees, can we see the speaker? Yeah, yeah, we're just working on it. Two seconds. Coming. Oh, uh-huh. 
Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Welcome to all participants in today's evening program. Devotees are here as well as devotees online. Nice to have your association. Right in front of Sishi uh, Gaunitai. <clears throat> it is. I want to make a little exception to what uh, the spiritualists of Prabhu mentioned earlier. He said that you, you can hold on to your question. So let's make a little exception because uh, I think it will be a little bit more interesting and uh, lively and even beneficial that we have a little bit more interaction as we go along. Of course, certainly, uh, you know, other questions I may have to refer to later on because I want to continue with the, the talk as well. But something which quickly they want to know, I have no objection at all. If somebody wants to raise their hand and then ask some question, that's fine. And reciprocally, I might also ask some question. So you know, please feel free uh, to say something about. Of course, it's purely voluntary. And it will be something very related to nothing compli complicated and be very simple. Now, yes, please. Well, first. I know some devotees in the back were saying they would like to see you more, Prabhu. Is it oh, possible okay. to let you with you? <laughs> That's fine, no problem. Maybe if we could just move yeah, the glasses on forward a little bit, Prabhu. Okay, okay, because the... Uh, you know, the process yeah, we'll just move it oh, forward if that's okay. That's Sorry, okay. Prabhu. Just angle. Yes. Sorry, Prabhu. Oh, not at all. No Come on in, please. Have you seat? So, all right. So, uh, the idea is you are spending your time here. So I want to make sure that you get something out of your time being here. So if in case I didn't cover something or didn't say something relevant for you, please feel free to tell me. Please, please ask me. So you, you talk so much about it. Uh, what is it all you are you're trying to convey to us? Is there something we can take home? So I would rather have that uh, instead of your not sure what I've spoken uh, anything relevant for you. I'm hoping that whatever is spoken in our temples is something relevant for all of us daily. So after we are talking here, something about very, very important for our lives. Uh, it is said that uh, human life is very rare. So I'll come to it quickly. Let me first offer my prayers to spiritual, spiritual master and and the Lord Himself. Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnana Andhira Salakya Chakshudan Militam Yena Tasmi Sikhar Venamaha Sri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Yena Bhutale Saim Rupa Kadamakshim Dadavati Svapadantikam Vandeham Sri Guru Sri Yutapada Kamalam Sri Guru and Vaishnavam Sche Sri Rupam Sagrayatam Sagan Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Saitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Sri Radha Krishna Pradhan Sagnadita Sri Vishakan Vitam Sacha E Krishna Karana Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jyotpati Rupesha Gupya Kanta Radha Kanta Namustati Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhi Vrindavani Sri Vishwana Siti Devi Kanama Mihari Priye Pancha Kalpa Tirubhyascha Kripa Sindhu Niyavicha Pachitanam Pani Bhyo Vishne Bhyo Namo Namaha Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Adyaita Gadadhar Sri Vasi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Rama Hare Hare. All right. <clears throat> so we have uh, chosen the topic as spirituality in daily life. <clears throat> Now, right there, there could be some question, right? Anyone has any question? I didn't hear the topic is spirituality. 
Is it uh, the mic is okay? I think it's working. Yeah. Anyone else has problem hearing in the back? Is that all right, Are you able to hear me now? Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you. So, uh, <clears throat> so what is spirituality, by the way, right? Is a good question to ask. Okay. Because people have different ideas also. Now, there are different traditions in human society at large. Um, due to uh, different um, historical and geographical um, considerations. So, uh, definitely there's understanding about something that is very important in our lives. So, uh, people might also call it uh, a religion. So, we will try to cover what religion is and what spirituality is. Okay. Uh, to start with, <clears throat> every living being, not just in human body, even on other beings, insect, even take the insect, which is moving, which is probably slowly growing. So, it's happening because the presence of soul. Spirit is another name for soul. So, in English language, spirituality refers to something pertaining to soul. Okay, so the soul itself is also very interesting uh, item to understand. So the presence of soul actually makes the body alive. When the soul is no more present, the body is not moving. The body, you know, people have to dispose of. Okay. So the heart facts in life. So uh, it's, a, it's a fact actually. So nothing really to uh, too much to think about in the sense of to worry about other. So you can think about it. So the soul is actually our true identity. This is what our Krishna actually tells Arjuna in Bhagavad Gita. So we have seen this, right? So in normal day-to-day -day life, of course, we don't think of the soul. Okay, we think a person, you know, like person, so we interact mostly on the bodily level. That's the way of the world. That's how the material world, how, that's how it works. Except for a few people, they actually can see the soul presence in everyone. Those who are highly uh, evolved, one who is spiritually highly accomplished. So they can see the presence of soul in the universe. In fact, Krishna says we all should come to that stage. Realizing not only we are soul ourselves, each of us, but there is soul in every other being. To make it more interesting, there's also another soul in every being. That is termed the super soul or Paramatma. What is Paramatma? Anyone can tell me? Just raise your hand. Paramatma. It's made of two words. Param, Atma. We are just Atma. So, Atma is a Sanskrit word for soul. And Param, Atma. So, we... Can you please? Param, Param and Atma. Two separate words. It's together it becomes Paramatma. Paramatma. Yes, yes, that's right. So I would presume that, that it means the ultimate soul, the Paramatma. I think you are getting there, that's right. Yeah. The supreme person. Supreme, supreme soul. Yeah, supreme soul. That's actually another word for supreme soul. And what is the supreme soul? So that is also explained in our uh, wonderful uh, wisdom texts. So I have here the Bhagavad Gita one, and I have also another book I tell you. So before that, I think there may be something to ask. There, there is a, a hand up online. Would you like to take a question? Yeah, for sure, us? sure. Okay, uh, Mother Vashanti, yeah. please go ahead. Hare Krishna, Guru Prasad Ji. Hare Krishna. I have a quick question. You just told us that there is two souls in the body. Uh, I think you. I heard you say that there is our soul. 
and also the paramatma i thought our soul is like a piece of the paramatma so shouldn't it be one soul this is what i had understood i don't know please explain yeah that's a very relevant question uh, <clears throat> this brings me to another very important point i should say okay <laughs> thank you for bringing this up actually hmm, we don't think of this but when we inquire about something beyond our day to day life even beyond our you know world affairs you know very very fundamental question this is what scientists are trying to do in the material realm they are searching for the most fundamental particle they have split that atom they have found within the atom there are subatomic particle quarks they say and then something like that they are still trying to explore what the most because they think there is something which they can learn about it then they can have something very very more because scientists are after knowledge spiritual scientists also do the same thing I mean, spiritualist okay, people who are eager to know they see it's so much different manifestation you know actually it's really something to wonder about this world so many different uh, flowers if you take amazing combination of colors flowers we have been to aquarium one of the big aquariums anybody been to big aquariums really maybe what did you find in aquarium is interesting uh, like i went to toronto yeah the big aquarium over there the interesting part is just like saw the yeah yeah that's right there are very different species of life and various different color combinations yeah. and always when i went when I, whenever i go to aquarium it really attracts me you know so many different varieties and sizes of fish all have different bodily shape and different colors amazing colors you cannot even think of the combination of the colors so when we look at all these things and then look at various different living things it's, it makes us wonder so we shouldn't take things for granted when you take things for granted of course we lose this you know wonderful capacity to wonder about things you know children are very eager to know what's going on around so they're always asking questions why is what this so we have to have that kind of a mindset to, which will help us quite a bit so <clears throat> so this thought has been there from for a long long time in human beings so human beings are <clears throat> at least in the in this material time the most advanced form of life okay. if you go back to our vitam tech there are 8 million 400000 species of life forms life forms yeah so these are all actually simple part of them so uh, of course all these life forms of bodies of course and then the soul now the source of all thing which you can perceive which you cannot perceive currently is a supreme source everything emanated from me and actually in shiva bhagavatam again later on it comes actually krishna is explained to god brahma so okay, you heard the term brahma right brahma vishnu sadashi like this so uh, when you take uh, more interest in studying what iskon is teaching about and what shri prabhupad has written about you will be you know forever you will be interested to continue your reading so it is so satisfying so enriching our lives so in shrimad bhagavatam it is mentioned that that krishna is telling brahma before the manifest of everything we call it creation right everything is created about when the world planet everything came about okay at some point we don't know how long ago but it was in there on at one point and it manifested manifested eventually so that is conceivable right so at one point and the source of everything is just krishna himself he said before the creation nothing was there i only myself was there nothing else and after the creation i continue to be as i am and eventually after manifestation unmanifested i would rather not say annihilation sometimes they use the word annihilation that means is gone it's really not you know with that uh, uh, even uh, ordinary scientists regular scientists know that there's no 
uh, loss of mass. Mass never exists. Mass cannot be destroyed. Mass can be transformed into energy. So it exists as matter or energy, only these two, these two states. It exists on energy. But again, all this energy, if you, if you want to take it the very common for us is to see the sun and feel the sun's energy. Everything also comes from the law. Therefore, he is the source of various, what we call as material, energy, as well as something we start talking about as spiritual. There's a spiritual realm where everything is different from what we perceive here. That everything is eternally existing and eternally uh, meaningful. And when we are as individual soul, when we reach that abode, spiritual realm, we will find what is our true, actually, our true home. When Prabhupada calls it back home, back to Godhead, we are meant to go back to the spiritual realm. That's where we truly belong. And we are here, and uh, here this world is actually to teach us it's not our permanent home. We'll never be fully satisfied. And Bhagavad Gita Krishna says, it is built in, not that imported some man, it is built in the material world. A lot of things which are going to make us troubles in our lives and make us wonder, why am I going this? What is the solution? How can it be always happy? So two things are very um, significant. One is we want to be happy all, all the time, right? And we also don't want to cease to exist, right? Even in this body, we want to stay in this body. We don't think of being of the body. We think that we have, we want to be eternally existing and we want to be eternally happy. That's what we are all about. The only thing one wants to actually achieve, the, the highest thing one can think of is, I want to be there forever. I want to be in a very high, happy state of being all the time. It's a genuine because why is our true nature? Our true nature is Sat Chit Ananda. Sat means eternally existing. Chit means cognizant. Not, not that you exist in the body and you are in coma. No, that's, that's not living. That's not lively in life. So you want to be cognizant about everything going on. And Ananda. Sat Chit Ananda. That is our true nature. That is the nature of the Supreme Lord. And coming back to answering this question, I asked. Because we are eternally part and parcel of the Lord, that means we are like His children. So we have this inherit this nature of our, in this particular situation, it's parent Krishna. So whatever attribute Krishna has, we also have. Primarily, is the, we are also eternal. We are also cognizant. We are also fully blissful. But the question is, why are we not experiencing it? So that's the question. Krishna is always like that. There is no question of not only Krishna, in his Krishna Loka or in Vaikuntha world, there are so many other souls are there, Jiva souls. We call it individual Atma, we call it Jiva Atma, Jiva Atma individual souls. They are all manifesting there uh, in their spiritual bodies and they are relating with Krishna. So therefore, the question you asked is very right question that uh, uh, <coughs> Supreme Soul, the source of everything is Krishna. And be, being part and parcel of the Lord, eternally we inherit you know, his um, nature of being eternal, cognizant, and blissful. But right now we are in the material body. So we have been given the material body, and we exist in the material body. So therefore we are there as an Atma, and Paramatma is manifesting in each and every body. Again, going back to Bhagavatam, Bhagavatam says the learned people, people are conversant, fully accomplished in spiritual knowledge, they say three aspects of the Supreme is there. Brahman, Paramatma, Bhagavan. Brahman is omnipresent, present everywhere. Interesting, they say, Krishna as Brahman is 
within and between atoms. Not only within the atom, in between the atoms. So that means there is no space where he is not present. Omnipresent, that's what it means. It's present everywhere. There is no, you see, this vacuum, Krishna is not there. No, he's in the vacuum too. So that is Brahman aspect. Paramatma aspect, as we mentioned earlier, is manifesting as super soul in, in the same region as next to them. So where typically in the heart region. Okay. It's not just it's not only in the heart, it is present there. And Bhagavan is the ultimate understanding about Krishna. When people talk about Brahman realizations, and yogis are talking about Paramatma. But above all, the complete understanding, spiritual understanding about Krishna is Bhagavan. Bhagavan is, uh, is um, endowed with so many wonderful attributes. That is his nature. You cannot ask, how come he has it? I don't have it. Okay. That's what Supreme Lord means. Because he is a source for him, no other source. So there's another text called Brahma Samhita. It's very, very unique. It is not known to apart from, to my knowledge, apart from this particular tradition we are following, which Srila Prabhupada kindly taught us. That tradition known as um, Brahma Madhva Gaudiya Vaishnava Sampradaya. So, in the Sampradaya, so many amazing texts are there. I mean, one life is not enough to study all of them, so much. So, one of the very important texts is Brahma Samhita, but Brahma himself is um, the author of this. So, he says, Iswara Parama Krishna, Satchidananda Vikraha, Anadir Adir Govinda Sarva Karana Karanam Iswara Parama Krishna Parama again Param Supreme Param Iswara Parameshwara Krishna is Parameshwara Satchit Ananda Vigraha Satchit Ananda His whole being Of course he has a form He has he created many different forms at his will That's again his, his potency So is Forever, always transcendental. Even if you appeared as Lord Nishimhadev, you know, you heard of Nishimhadev, Lord Nishimhadev, half man, half lion, I can't understand. Yeah. Who, who doesn't know yet? If you know the story of Prakhlad, you definitely know that, right? He appeared in that particular form. Very interesting story behind that. We won't get into that. So, he um, is always, whatever body may seem for us as something inconceivable, he can take that form also and he will be fully spill spiritual. He has no material, if you want to call it contamination. So nothing can actually contaminate. He's supremely pure. Supremely pure, supremely pure. That is his nature. Now, um, therefore, the, the results are here in this. Now Krishna actually is here there because he's trying to, to get our attention. We are busy with the day-to-day -day stuff in life, which, which of course we are bound to do that because uh, most of us have you know, duty as well as uh, responsible individuals. So, uh, as a child, of course, we depend upon parents and but at a certain age, <clears throat> we are supposed to take care of ourselves. So therefore we have to prepare for that, education, studies, etc. But the question is also, notwithstanding all of this in doing that, we will still face the situation that uh, we're going to grow um, cold, using my hat like that. And then um, there are some difficulties coming with old age. And eventually we'll be forced to give this body up. And that's a very, very important question to think about. So there are 8,400,000 forms of life. So when we get into any other form also, there's no guarantee which form a particular person will take. It is possible for the person to, to any individual, to actually progress spiritually and eventually go back home, back to Godhead. That should be actually every human being's utmost duty. It is a duty. 
where you are meant to be eternal, cognizant, this true. If you are not there, then you are not belonging to somewhere else, and therefore you will be having problems. Whichever form of life you have, there will be problems. The ultimate purpose of human life is to go back, go back, go back to God. So spirituality is about knowing that is the goal and working towards the goal. Therefore, spirituality in daily life is very important. That's the point to number one. What is important? Can you repeat what is it? What is important? Spirituality. And uh, what about that? What you're supposed to be spiritually, spirituality, pursuing spirituality means. Uh, what you're supposed to do to pursue it? Right. Correct. What are you supposed to do? Okay. Not sure. Um, yeah. To know the purpose. Right? We are spiritual being in the material body. Yeah. And we have to think about our spiritual perfection. If you many saints have sung so many songs, you know, which are language, Indian language you take. So many saints have given this message. We simply don't pay attention to what they are saying. They're saying this is this enough, enough of being here. Just give all desires and attachment. Think of the Lord and go back to him. That is the message for most of the saints. Because they understand, they understood everything. And they are here for the purpose of educating us. All these songs are meant for. Some of the songs of glorification of the Lord, for sure, we have to do. Because the spiritual process, you don't do independently. Some people may think that I can pursue. I can pursue some yoga. Do this. But when the Lord is waiting to help us, why should we not take the help from Him? Example, the Lord sent Srila Prabhupada. I never thought when I came to Canada that I'm going to meet some Krishna devotees and become interested in learning about Krishna and to practice. I didn't ever I think I came here and thought I'd have a good job and uh, you know, much better life. Yes, yeah, so that is aspiration is there. We want to have a very comfortable life. There's nothing wrong with that. But when you got caught up in doing this and, and after achieving it, fully only absorbed in that and forgetting this, then something is amiss, something is missing. So this is the point again, spirituality is important in our daily life. We try to understand what is that spirituality means. So we have to ask this question. That question should always be there in the back of our mind. Then, because we are interested, something interesting happens. And you see, we depend on the Lord, lots of things will become revealed to you. When you are in the association of devotees who are practicing it, you will not get it just by studying. You have to have the interest and the inspiration to continue with that interest. You may have the interest, but you will not continue until you are being inspired. You will not have inspiration unless you are in the association of people who are having the same goal. The devotees of this gone. They understood it. That's why they put into practice daily. This is what spiritual master says. You do this. You should take chapamala. Chant Hare Krishna Mantra. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, 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 Hare Hare. Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram Ram, Hare Hare. It is not just uh, saying something without any purpose because this is reiterated again and again and again. And this is very fundamental. Even when you become, you know, we take shelter of the spiritual master. Because everyone should give it to Because only with the presence of spiritual master, spiritual progress is possible. Uh, if we try on our own, then we have to wait a long time. Many, many, many words. There's no guarantee. But the moment we take shelter of a bona fide spiritual master, not anyone claiming to be a spiritual master, 
All these things you will learn when you come to ISKCON regularly. You will not know. It's very difficult. I've been to many different spiritual organizations, so-called spiritual organizations, even while in India. But somehow, they didn't really strike a chord with me, so to say. When I read Srila Prabhupada's books, he said, ah, here is a person who can actually clarify all the doubt. Of course, I didn't personally ask any question to him about that. But reading his books and praying to him, you see, you have to take someone as authority because we, I don't have the knowledge. I have to acquire the knowledge of spirituality. I can't just sit and think and then the knowledge will come to me. No. I have to get from someone who is already having the knowledge. Okay. And that person can help us. He is willing to help us. He is ready to help us. We may think the Prabhupada is not here in the physical form, but he is present in his books. He is present in his instruction. Many of uh, because you know, Sir Prabhupada came in 1965, towards the end of 1965, and 1977 actually left this material world. He comes from the spiritual world. Therefore, he is an emissary from the spiritual world. So, therefore, he can go anywhere he wants. He is actually willing to fulfill the desire of the Lord. And that comes back to this point. What is the desire of the Lord? The desire of the Lord is having us all back home with Him. You see, there is something about relationship. Even in this day-to-day life, you know, we see how relationship is important. We do not necessarily think about it that much, but we know that uh, we want to be with people who understand us, like-minded. It may be friends or within the family, you know, we have a certain arrangement, we are born in a particular family and then we have a relationship with the family and then the relation becomes so, you know, nobody likes it, neither party likes it. Everybody wants a sweet relationship, okay? which is true. Okay? Two things, love and relationship. Okay? Relationship without love doesn't have much to offer. Love can be friendly also, friendly relationship also. It doesn't, relationship doesn't mean only family relationship. It's a friendly relationship. And this relationship becomes perfect. This loving nature. Yes. We all, we all want to love and want to be loved. Not only to love someone, we want to love someone. We all also want to be loved. So that happens typically in the family situation, most of the time in the normal family. And it happens also between very good friends. People understand each other, so they do things for each other, voluntarily. That is love. Not waiting to opportunity, to voluntarily to do some survey, to some help. So this actually fosters religion. And there has to be reciprocation as well. You know that only you are only either giver only or you are only receiver only. No. That also not a perfect of relationship. It has to work in the face. So this relationship with Krishna is possible for us. And we need to be established in that relationship. If we try to do it right here, guarantee we'll go back to him. After giving up this particular body, we'll go back to him. Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, he says, he says, how do we stay in relationship? He says, Always think of me, become my devotee, offer formation to me. When you come to the temple, offer obeisances. They are not just um, um, what they call them, um, you know, uh, just practices without meaning. No, no, not people to be. I, I may be doing it as a without knowledge, I may be doing it because I see my elders, parents, they do it. Because I take them as authority, they are doing the right thing, so I follow them. Same, you have to take authority someone because inherently you have some problems. Okay, we have limited sense perception. Uh, we are easily illusioned. Okay? We cannot um, really. You know, sometimes we are illusioned about certain things. 
um, maybe some very uh, certain schemes you can make rich quick you can rich quickly you do this you do that and uh, we don't really pay attention we are illusioned by the promise and then we in that and then you get cheated so cheating imperfect senses and um, subject illusion cheating cheating tendency and being cheated that also is there and um, and uh, we don't uh, the fourth one I think um, mistakes we make a lot of mistakes so that in limited sense perception we are able to miss that prone to make mistakes and we are illusion we can also cheat so these are inherent so therefore you have to find someone who is genuine authentic and that person is Shri Prabhupada we take interest to know about him and what he why he came to North America absolutely there is no need for him he was so comfortable everything was there for him going on he was already highly you know, accomplished spiritual he came because that was the desire of his spiritual master and his spiritual master also at the same desire this way the whole discipline section which is going back to uh, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu I haven't even started talking about him and all the way back to Krishna himself so this tradition it cannot have any better you know of accomplishing if you have a true interest in progress in spiritual life and get the get the real purpose of human life fulfilled then we have to take the guidance given available to us if we don't take it of course krishna gives always has given us the free will then we are missing the opportunity what can what else can be said so this is the desire of all the genuine saints the same Jesus Christ said the same thing to his people you follow me you have to go back to our supreme father the same message he didn't say that make a lot of money enjoy that was not that Jesus Christ's uh, you know, message to the disciples and people in general, that's not the message, right? So what's wrong with making a lot of money? I didn't hear anything. What's wrong with making a lot of money? Ah, that's a very interesting question. Thank you for that. See, <clears throat> we are already, I said that we are illusioned. We are, I mean, so that's an illusion that with money we'll be happy forever. Money is definitely required. No, I mean, money is useful. Yes. And it's important. Yes. But I'm not saying that money will give happiness, mm -hmm. but I'm just saying that what's wrong with needing a lot of money? Nothing really wrong. But if, what you're going to do with that is very important also. What will you do with that? <laughs> I don't know. Mm -hmm. So then why are you think why you think that you have to make lots of money? I don't think because you said that. He didn't say that you need to make a lot of money, so I'm just like asking them what's wrong with making a lot of money. Yeah, you see, money actually increases our illusion. You think that you can enjoy it. So, if you see, that's why it's not enough. The billionaire, first, the people want to become a millionaire. The millionaire wants to become a billionaire. And he wants to be number one billionaire. Everybody is working towards that only. To a little or greater extent. Okay. This desire is there because we actually this is called the tendency to lord it over the material world. Money is the means to lord it over. I want things to suit my convenience, my desire. I want to have this, this, this. One car is not enough. I want to have two cars. Therefore, I have to have a two car garage house. What happens uh, you know, husband and wife, and then children comes, will come of the age. Then you have to move to take our garage house because the child also wants to have a car. Vice versa, while they're meeting, they're striving, he wants to have a car. You have the money, you don't do it for him, who is what the money is for. So you only give him. So this increases our attachment to this world. The money, when it is used properly, is very good uh, tool. But we do not know how to use money. That could be one of the problems of making money.
because we do not know how to use it and can actually land us in trouble. Many people want to become instant millionaires, not to you know, Majority of the cases, they become much um, unhappy than previously they were before becoming a million, winning that lottery. They say, there has been many, many stories about that. So it simply means we do not know what exactly the best for us. We have to acknowledge that. If we don't acknowledge that we don't know everything, we don't know what is best for us, we will not know how to achieve that, what is the best for us. So we think, because we see about other people are working so hard, they want, even the very thing you wanted, because people want to make money, so nothing wrong, you're asking that question, because you have seen that what people are working about, yeah. But unless you ask and find out how this can be really make you, not just happy, that may, money may be able to buy comfort, convenience and all, but it cannot buy you love. And love, just now we said love is very important. Even in the poor households, because there's a very good understanding relationship, so they are better off than rich people who have very sore relationship. So, because the mm -hmm. mental agony is much difficult than physical inconvenience. Yes, Prabhu. You have a question? Uh, yeah, no, I just had a statement like, even in our religion, money is considered to be a very important tool. Because as it comes as in the form of what is Lakshmi. Lakshmi is considered to be wealth and money and everything. So Lakshmi is considered to be mm -hmm. very important. Yes, Prabhu, you can see. You can see. Yeah. I was just thinking about this question and what Prabhu just said. What's wrong with the making money? The way I see it, it's not, nothing is wrong, but it's the problem is when it becomes a purpose of the life. See that situation in, in the material world very often. People, all they're thinking about the whole purpose of their existence becomes mm. how to become, how to mm. attain some wealth. And what means attaining wealth is opportunity to enjoy, and generally it means separation from the world. So, this is the biggest problem in the way, one of the, one of the ways you can say it's a problem, and it becomes the purpose of the life. Right? And that's why we exist. To achieve money, to achieve the opulence, which means mm -hmm. more enjoyment mm -hmm. for us separately. Right. Right. But yeah. what Prabhu was saying is the purpose of life is to try to come to the level when you're trying to serve the Lord. And if you have money, that what was a Lakshmi God with Lakshmi, then it's we are using that Lakshmi that running in the service of the Lord, nothing wrong with it. But when we are using money for our own enjoyment, it becomes also for the spiritual life. We forget about the Lord. We need to get to know the purpose of the real purpose of spiritual life, which is to step back and practice. And also, for the love of God. But that's one of the ways I think. Yeah. And also, most of the time, uh, money is considered to be synonymous with happiness, which is not always true. So you heard that you know money is a very good tool when yeah. it is used in the service of the Lord. Actually, that enhance your spiritual life. Yeah. Okay. So everything can be used in the service of the Lord. Yeah. Okay. Starting with our time. So how much time we can give to that? Because that everyone has time. Yeah. It's up to each of us how we spend that time. And time is very, very valuable. You see, you said to make money, you have to work hard. Mm -hmm. A certain amount of, you know, responsibility is there, so people have to study, you know, get this job that, and do that. But isn't that like when like some someone is really working hard and like really uh, like gaining that success with money as well, maybe? So like, I don't know if it's ego, but a part of that money if he or she wants to like do it on things on herself because like that person is working hard to go there. So like, I'm going to talk a little bit more further on this because there are one or question also I will listen to that and then we'll come to your point. Good good point. Keep keep remind me on that. Yes, Prabhu. Just want to um, 
shared experience. I was in Brindle and then um, I get an opportunity to talk to some saintly people there uh, who was living there and now for an outlaw. And uh, I just went to them and talked to them. Uh, there was in a very uh, delightful state. Uh, they have no jobs and they're not working hard to earn bread and butter. They don't know when from where their next meal is coming from. It's an extreme example I'm, I'm taking to understand the mindset. Mm. And I just went to them and asked, don't worry about it or like, oh, what's your purpose? Uh, they, they have the trust on, in the nature. Uh, the, the only part I learned from them is they have no anxiety. It's more mm. and more of right. We, right. We, are, we are always in a state of anxiety. Uh, and I was reading some books. Uh, it says that it's more the emotional state. There are two emotional factors. One is fear and one is faith. The, the rich people have been as in the state of fear that they will lose the money. Yeah. And I go on that because I want also to tell online people because they cannot hear what you are saying. So let me just tell them, you know, it's fair. They are also meeting. They are part of our audience. There's <laughs> also, they're not here. There's also two questions online yeah. as well. Yeah. So I'm, then, and in that case, I'm going to come to you a little later. Okay. Now your point is very good. I want to say that also because that point you what is it correct? We have two main problems. We have hankering and lamentation. We hanker for things to have, and we lose it. We lament. Is it what lies it about? Is there something better we can do apart from hankering and lamenting? We should think about it. Okay. Let's go. There's two questions online, Prabhu. One is uh, Hari Namamrita Prabhu says, Hari Krishna, go back to Godhead. How can we achieve this? <laughs> That's his question. Going back, going back to Godhead? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Is it okay? Yes, now, he has another question or somebody else? That, that's his, his question is okay. how to go back to Godhead, how to achieve what, this. Yeah, what is the other question? And the other question is a handout from Mother Vishanti. Okay, so she's still okay. waiting to ask the question. Yeah, she's waiting to ask a question. Okay, please go ahead. Um, Shanti, you can go ahead. Vishanti, you can go ahead. Vishanti, okay, Hare Krishna. Thank you so much, Guru Prasad ji. Uh, my question is pretty basic. It's based on what has been discussed this far. There was this young lady who I could hear talking about, is it wrong to make money, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. uh, this question is basically in line with that. Um, like for example, me, I'm in an age where I have to work to make money for a living. It's not about saving and making a lot of money. So sometimes I find it really hard to balance you know, doing like materialistic things, like for example, I work hard until eight o'clock, nine o'clock at night on some days, but then at the same time, I have to spend time for spirituality and Krishna and all that. So how do people like me who are at an age where we have to earn, and this is my practical practicality, right? Mm -hmm. So is there any tips you can give for people like us uh, to balance like the materialistic needs as well as the spiritual needs? Hare Krishna. Thank you. Sir. Hare Krishna. Yes, that's also a very, very important question. One factor we should remember, when we start taking interest in Krishna, Krishna reciprocates. If you say, again, going back to what the other person was saying, that he came met with Vrindavan, people who do not know when their next meal is going to come from, and they are living anxiety-free. Why? They are spending time with Krishna, singing about him, talking about him, and that is a faith which actually elicits from Krishna his reciprocation. When you do things faithfully, sincerely, Krishna, you tell in Bhagavad Gita and through the saints, this is what we are supposed to do in our day-to-day -day life, and Krishna actually reciprocates. So, Krishna has already, uh, there is a very nice song sir, there also, is it don't worry too much about your material welfare. You know, the, the ant gets its share of food, and the elephant get also gets its share of food. And there is one particular thing it mentioned, in certain stones, within the stone, you will find some living entity, and there is a little bit of water also there. 
for it to survive. So Krishna will actually take care of us, but when we depend on him, when we depend on our own effort, it's up to us whatever we need to do. Krishna is willing to take charge. You know, there is a very important sloka. Ananyas chintayanto maam ejana paripasite tesham nityab yuktanam yoga kshevam vahamiyam You are always thinking of me. I give them what they lack, I preserve what they have. So, as long as Krishna is out of the picture, then we have to struggle hard, we have to think about the future, this and all. But when the moment we bring Krishna as very relevant in our life, our life cannot go without being in association with Krishna in some way. Many different ways of being in association with Krishna. Nine different pras are given. Shavanam, Kirtanam, Smaranam, Padasevanam, Archanam, Mandanam, Dasyam, Atmanivedanam. These are all there in our books. Please have association with devotees regularly. You can have the association with Sri Prabhupada by reading his books. And you keep priority of chanting the Hare Krishna mantra and keep reading Prabhupada books. Things will become much easier. And much life will be more relishable here in this material body. Life become more relishable. Somehow, by good fortune, I came across devotees of Krishna. And really made a big difference in my life. I am blessed beyond my wild imagination. It is true, it is happening to so many people. I'm only one example. Please, this is my request. Come to the temple as often as possible to start reading Prabhupada's books and follow his instruction. And this is what I want you to take home. Believe. Just believe. Believe in the deities. Believe in Srila Prabhupada. And read these books. And make your life perfect. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Harinam of the Prabhu said something. Yes. He is already on the path of going back home, Dr. Hare. Yes. Prabhu, so we simply asking this question for others' benefit, I know. Yeah, Hare Krishna, thank you so much, Guru Prasadji. Thank you for asking this question. Thank you for being there. Please uh, make Krishna a very important part of your life. And if you, and we can do one thing, we can pray to Him because people go and pray, you know, in the temple or wherever because they want things, right? Right. So we did pray to Krishna. Krishna, I want you. Mm -hmm. I want you as important in my life. Then Krishna will make the way for us because it all takes our first step. We need to take that step. And all this, whatever we talk about, whatever in the books is bringing us to that point. We need to take the step and keep walking. Not that we take the step, first step and then stop. And we keep walking towards Krishna. And he will make everything very easy for us. Any other question? Yes, Prabhu. I want to comment. In the whole session, you have been using one sentence very often that spirituality is a very important part of life. And you have used it. Ten number of times. So it's so important is that you did not use the spirituality as a very essential part. Of it. You said important, and this this basically tells that there is a full democracy 
You have to see the dark mm -hmm. There is no force uh, in Sanatana Dharma. Basically, this is the point we made is that you have a choice, but it's important, but it's not essential because if somebody doesn't want to uh, you know, mm -hmm. enjoy the life this way, mm -hmm. yes, there is a mm -hmm. there is a space for ethics, there is a space for moral ignorance and mm -hmm. everything. So it's a very important point. Right. Good point. Thank you. Good point. Yes, very good point. <clears throat> Actually, I'm going to do something <laughs> different than what Prabhu just said. I'm going to say it is essential for all of us here to yes. come to the temple. It is essential, but because we are already have the interest, so I don't want to make it diluted. It's an option. I'm not going to say it's an option. It is a must for us because you have some faith. You have come here, so you benefit by because of the coming here. So for you all, it's a must. <laughs> so no option. Okay, because no, this way, uh, somebody, somebody gives you a little bit nudge to do that because you're already ready to do that. So why should I give you option? I can do it. It's up to you. No, it's not up to you. It's a must for you. Do you agree with that? It's a must. I have one question. Last question. Okay. All right. Okay. Raise the hand. Okay. Go ahead. Yeah, just uh, like the Prabhu gave his example that he was and uh, in Vrindavan and his profession and things like that. So, how do you attain that state of mind where you are totally satisfied? Like, I grew up in this culture with Krishna and everything, but I was always taught that, okay, you have to pursue a, a career, you have to become something. So, how how do you match both, both of those things? Yeah. You know, I wondered about it so much after reading Prabhupada's books. I wondered why my parents didn't tell me that study Bhagavad Gita. My grandparents didn't tell me Bhagavad Gita. You see, something happened in the history of our nation. We have been domination has been there for us. How long? Five hundred years? More than five hundred years. Fifteen hundred. So yeah, something like that. So what happened, you become an important aspect of, of the parents. I, I was trying to find, why didn't they tell me? Because I know that they didn't hear from their parents or their grandparents. And their grandparents didn't hear from their parents. So it goes probably different generations. So we really lost touch with our true spiritual heritage. We lost touch with them. Thank God it was still alive in the tradition, even this tradition of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu tradition, even Mahaprabhu is Krishna himself, even after his coming, telling all these things, for a while it flourished and then it became almost into oblivion, seemingly. But there are genuine souls always exist. People are genuinely spiritual, they always exist. Because the, the Lord is not going to, you know, wash his hands off on this world. He's actually very, very eager for us. So that tradition continued and eventually it got rejuvenated by a very important uh, personality in our uh, recent history, Sachinan Sri Bhaktivinoda Thakur. You will get all to know all these things eventually. Then you will wonder. Yeah. And when I read all these things, I became awestruck actually. That is the problem. Nobody there to push us to do this. It has become even worse now. Children right from grade one or two are forced to study well by the parents. They have become very, very competent. They have to do competition and do this. Thing. They grow with anxiety. The unfortunate situation. It should be like that. And hopefully, you can make a difference for your children by knowing this, you encourage them. Please do that. Actually, it is said again, again in the Sastra, it is said a person should not be in a responsible position unless he can deliver people who are dependent on him. That includes parents. The parents are only giving means for living here and not achieving perfection of human life, going back home, back to, back to God. They are responsible for missing that opportunity and they may have to have some consequences up there. I just so, want to make a statement. I have too many questions for you now. I have to give somebody else. Yeah. Okay. I'll talk to you afterwards. I'll talk to you. Okay. okay. Yeah. Okay. Anything else?
Anybody else? Prabhu, we have make it to, just in two minutes because we have to have a kidney as well. Yeah, go ahead. Or you want to talk to me afterwards? Just want to add one thing. Everybody is going to be of interest to everybody. Yes. Okay. So I just want to add to the to this question. Uh, mention how we can get. Abhadam uh, says that we think we are the doers, but we are actually not the doers. Once we have the understanding that we are not the doers, you have to you have to talk to the person eventually, because it's getting little technical. It's valid point, but it's little technical. So let's keep it to the point that what we want to do is let's take the first step towards walking in the spiritual path and keep working and get all the guidance we can get from. I can vouch for Srila Prabhupada because I personally connected with So come here as often as possible. Bring your children. Bring your children. If you do things properly, they watch you and they will do eventually they will learn it. They will not, they, they don't learn from hearing what you say, they learn from seeing what you do. What you do is more important for them than what you tell them to do. Right? That parents should actually show the path for the children. Anything else? Can you have a few minutes, few minutes for Kirtan? Or just right. 10 minutes? Let's start. Thank you. Yes, okay. yes, I was going to say thank you at the end, but the Sharad Prabhu and Sonia, uh, Madhma Sonia, yeah, yeah, they okay. took it out here. They can ask one question. Okay, okay. They have just a comment. They wanted to say, Hare Krishna Guru Prasad Prabhu, thank you for a wonderful and heartfelt presentation on the importance of spirituality in our daily lives. Yeah, you summed it up. Thank you, Shalik Prabhu. You summed it up nicely for me. Okay. Yes, Prabhu. Thank you so much for that. It was very heartfelt and uh, much appreciated. How are you both, Prabhu? Hare Krishna, Hare Bhav. So I think we should have some kids then. So that we will stop and feel free. Please come and talk to me if you want to. I will be more than happy to spend a few minutes with you. Srila okay. Prabhupada ki, Shri Sri Gaunitai ki, Hari Nam Sankirtan ki, and Prabhupada's books ki. Hari. Thank you all for being so patient with me. Uh, I am not a very uh, eloquent speaker. So if you got something out of it, it is to your credit. Because even my, you know, Whatever I blabbered, if you talk, you found something meaningful, the credit is to you. And if I say something meaningful to you, the credit is to Srila Prabhupada because he actually gave me this whatever knowledge I have, he gave me that knowledge. That's right. Thank you, Prabhupada. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.